All right, guys, so it's been a couple of days since I first showed you Android 13 running on the original Surface Duo. In this video, what I'm going to do is quickly answer some questions and show off some things that maybe aren't working super well. Just kind of give you a deeper dive and, like I said, answer some of the questions that were left on some of the other videos. So let me first go through the Android 13 stuff that I've classified under bugs or things to work on. So the first one is the fact that when the device is closed, yes, this thing's cracked. It's been cracked for a really long time. It's fine. It's only cosmetic, guys. Beauty is only skin deep. When you open it, it doesn't know that that's happened and it doesn't wake up the screen. You're going to have to hit the power button or use the fingerprint scanner to wake it up. And because of this, someone else asked about peak mode. There's not going to be any kind of a peak mode because that's not been, you know, made for this basically. That is something that would have to be recreated by the developer Ty. And um, I don't know how big of a priority that is going to be. I've also noticed some strange app incompatibilities, right? So like one of the things I've had trouble with are certain apps just not functioning or crashing? Let me open up the Google Play Store and I'll give you a good example here. I forgot I already had it installed actually. OneNote. So I go to open up OneNote and OneNote keeps stopping. So we're going to hit close and now we're just staring at a black screen. I can go home. Let's try opening it up again and it just doesn't seem to function. And I don't know exactly what to make of that. I think I tried this in phone mode as well. That was a weird thing that I've just created. Let's go home. And let's try one note again. We'll try actually dismissing it like that and we'll do it again one more time just to see. I just don't think that one note seems to function for some reason. Don't really have any explanation for that, but it just it won't open. So you may run into some instances of that. Although I do want to point out something quite cool. When we're in the recents here, you have the ability to select text out of this. This is a pixel feature, which is really, really good. Definitely do appreciate that quite a bit. How about another duo feature that I kind of expected to be here, but doesn't seem to work either. This was actually the reason why I installed OneNote in the first place. We're going to end up going with Google Keep because of this. Let's um, open up Google Keep Notes and let's open up the web browser. And let's just long press on some text. And on Duo, you can actually drag text from one screen to the other. Let's open up a notepad here and let's try to drag this text over. Actually, that did work this time. That's interesting. That actually was something I tried the other day and it didn't work and now it's working. I don't know why it's not working, but it's now working. Very strange. Let's try this with another app. It's working just fine. I have no idea why that didn't work the other day, but we're working fantastically now. Very good. So something else that wasn't working out of the box, but does seem to be working okay now. It's not quite as fast as I would hope it would be, but it is at least functioning, is my cellular connection, which you can see I'm connected to now. If we go into our settings, and then we scroll down one more, you'll see PHH treble settings. This is something that Ty suggested I try out to fix this. Go into IMS features. He mentioned going to create IMS APN, but that doesn't seem to do anything. So then I just skipped to the next thing you said to try, which was toggling request IMS network. I then went into network internet. I clicked on my SIM. I scrolled down to access point names and I created the MIT Mobile access point. You can find this for your individual carrier, the settings that you need. You fill that out, click save, connect to that. I then backed out. I turned off automatically select network and then I manually connected to the appropriate network as you can see there. And it is now working, albeit it is a little bit slow. We'll just go to google.com. Part of this is just going to be because my coverage for Mint in this particular house is not very good. It's a two-story house and uh, cell service is just not very good in here. If I went out to the backyard or to the front yard, it'd probably be a whole heck of a lot faster. But in the house, it is very, very, very slow, but it is at least functional. Your mileage may vary. Text messages and phone calls do also appear to be functioning though. Another thing people asked about was pin input. And yes, your Surface pin will work just fine, but your buttons are not going to do anything at all. The buttons, there's nothing in the operating system that are going to make those buttons work out of the box that would have to be added in. So the pin works, the buttons do not. Kind of sticking with applications that don't work or maybe won't do what you're thinking that they're going to do. I tried installing Microsoft Launcher and it just did not want to function either. But here's the thing, even if it did function, 
it's not going to give you the split screening stuff like you're hoping for from Surface Duo. It's not going to work like that at all. That stuff is in the operating system. The best way that I could describe it is that the split screening stuff is in the operating system and the launcher was sort of responsible for directing that behavior, telling the OS what app to put on what screen, right? So you need both of those things working together. That's not going to happen here. Here's a strange one that I just kind of wanted to try because it popped up. Let's go into security and let's go down to face and fingerprint unlock because this does have face unlock and I want to see how well this works. So we're going to angle this up at myself and it says that it has scanned my face. So we're going to lock it. We're going to kind of angle it like this. Let's go wide angle. Let's turn it on. Whoa, it scanned my face very, very quickly. Did you see that? Hey, so face unlock is absolutely functional on this thing. Really, really quite funny. Strange to see on this device. Of all devices, it makes probably the least sense here. But it's working pretty well. Another interesting or maybe dumb thing that I tried was SwiftKey. And as you can see by default, it thinks it's on a tablet. So it's splitting the layout across both screens. And quite funny, uh, Bing is not here either. And I'm signed in and Bing has still not shown up on this device. So that is actually very, very funny. But some people wanted to see some other keyboard stuff. So let's rotate this way. I guess I need to zoom back out again. And you can see here that what we have is, I mean, it's okay. I'm actually gonna switch to Gboard just because I think it's just an all around better keyboard. And that's a little bit better. You would actually see this whole app coming down here. Like if this wasn't just a black screen, you would see the web page and so forth. And that's how you would type uh, on this. And then of course, if you rotate back this way, you're all the way across. Although I think, it's not recognizing the thumb layout. With some tablets, you'll get the thumb keyboard layout. You're not getting that here with Gboard, so that is definitely interesting. Someone else wanted to know, well, what happens if you are typing and you have two apps open? You're split screening between two applications. Well, I believe it's gonna be pretty similar to this. So let's throw Google Photos over there and let's go to type exactly the same as it was. Let's rotate around. And what you have is app and then app. So whenever you open up the keyboard, everything just slides up. So half of that app goes off the top screen. That's what the behavior is going to be like for that one. I've also had people asking, can you do three apps open at once? Since this is now perhaps not restricted by some of Microsoft's uh, decisions, the answer to that is no. You can only have two apps open at a time. You can see here there's no option there to open up a third app. And if you try to drag up another app, your only option is to replace one of the other two. Someone else also wanted to know about having a full screen game on one side and then something else on the other. So allow me uh, to download a game real quick. All right, so we've got Minecraft up and running here. Let's just jump into a new world. Okay, so we're in a game, so what we're gonna need here is our task bar. So let's grab that and let's just do Google Photos. We'll throw it over there. The game has sort of reflowed in a somewhat uh, awkward, not necessarily <laughs> the best way. Actually, what we really need up here is YouTube. That's what we need up there. But again, even with doing that, it's not adjusting to the size of the screen. Actually, you know what? Am I wrong? Was I wrong this whole time? Are those buttons just how it looks? I think I am. I think that that's just how those buttons look. I guess I'm going to have to do this and then go. For, yeah, that's just how those buttons look. I thought we were missing something over here. That is my mistake. That appears to be working relatively well. Okay, yeah, that's this is working fine. I mean, it's not perfect, but like it's, it's relatively close to uh, how it worked on, on the normal do. Everything seems to be doing pretty well here. So I think I've covered pretty much all the big questions at this point. Excuse me if I have not. I'm actually feeling slightly under the weather. So maybe there'll be like a part two to this. If I've missed something, drop another comment. Maybe in a few days, we'll try this again. I think this is gonna be the first video in like a couple of years that I'm not visibly like featured in the video. So feel free to also speculate as to what sort of horrible disfigurement has befallen me. That should be fun in the comments as well. Guys, I will see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.